welcome to High Tech Heroes, the program that takes you behind the scenes of today's high tech industries, where you can meet the people and examine the ideas creating tomorrow's technology. And now, coming to you from the studios of Foothill College, high atop the mountains overlooking Silicon Valley, here's your host, Sherwin Gooch. Hello, I'm Sherwin Gooch. Welcome to High Tech Heroes. Our guest this week was born in Grodno, Poland. He was awarded a bachelor's in engineering from Drexel University and a master's from UCLA. Our guest worked as a technician on the very first commercial electronic digital computer. He then helped develop telemetry systems at Cape Canaveral and designed magnetic recording products. At Hughes Aircraft, our guest worked on systems to process radar data, and then at Rand Corporation, he worked on issues in computer privacy and long-range forecasting, as well as inventing packet switching. This makes him the father of all the derivative packet switch networks which followed. Becoming an entrepreneur, he co-founded many companies, including Institute for the Future, Cable Data Associates, Packet Technologies, Comprint, Equatorial Communications, Telebit, Stratacom, Metricom, and Interfax. Concurrent to these activities, our guest published over 60 papers, testified before the Congress of the United States, and secured many patents, including some relating to packet switching, the Telebit Ensemble Modem, and Spread Spectrum Systems Fundamental to the VSAT. Some of our guests' most recent awards include the ACM Communications SIG Annual Award, both the Alexander Graham Bell Medal and the Edwin H. Armstrong Award from the IEEE, and most recently, the Marconi International Fellowship Award. When I was at Packet Cable, there was an office at the end of the hall which contained more data books than anyone else had. I was impressed beyond words when I was told that this was the office of the company president. I now have the honor of welcoming to our program that man, the inventor of packet switching and a prolific entrepreneur, Mr. Paul Barron. Hello, Hi. Paul. Hi, Sherwin. Good seeing my old friend. <laughs> yeah, well, welcome to High Tech Heroes. Well, thank you. Good being here. Well, it's great to have you here. So, um, you worked uh, as a technician on the first uh, commercially available digital Yeah, computer, just out of school and uh -huh. needed a job. and. There were these crazies building this machine, and, and I was involved with light testing of the components. And uh, I was only there about six months, but during that time, I convinced myself these damn things will never work. Because uh -huh. in those days, every diode was different, and you test them to find out what part of the circuit to use. Oh, that's incredible. And, uh, so, well, Cray selects memory circuits now. So right, well, <laughs> nothing worked right. Yeah. And there's so many parts, and uh, things would fail, and this would go wrong and figure there's no future to computers. So uh, what was that computer? That was the, became the first UNIVAC. So this was at uh, Eckert Mockley? Eckert Mockley mm -hmm. Computer Company. It was so UNIVAC 1, that's, UNIVAC. Uh, that's incredible, a lot of tubes. So you, did you have to change tubes often? Or? Uh, well, I was in the life testing and, and uh, testing so. the tubes and find, well, this tube wouldn't work and that couldn't take this voltage. And uh, that we convinced ourselves that uh, uh, this this is pretty pretty flaky stuff. Yeah, I no, no future in computers. Sure. You know, I have a, a manual for the Iliac One, which uh, actually the Ordvac, which was the version they made for the government. But uh, that was such an odd machine. I remember it was really sort of an asynchronous machine. They would look at the ripples in the mm -hmm. uh, most significant bit or in the carry bit, mm -hmm. and it, when those ripples died away, they figured it was time to go to the next <laughs> destruction. <laughs> so I don't. I guess it's an asynchronous machine, really, but. Uh, Anyway, so what kind of diagnostic tools do you have? <laughs> oh, gee, you know, voltmeters and scopes, and uh, that uh, at this time it was it was just the beginnings, and we'd find things like uh, sleeping sickness when a tube was in the zero state and it went in the one state, it mm -hmm. may miss the first pulse. Now things would pull out your hair. One of the reasons to have so little hair left is. But you sort of fun. decided how often they changed the tubes. Well, anyways. it didn't it didn't get quite that far. I was only there about six months and. Because uh, with the Iliac, they, they pulled out all the, I guess they were 12 AT7, the 12 AX7s, mm -hmm. just truckloads. Every truck 200 loads, hours, yeah. I think, they'd, they'd change all the tubes out. Mm -hmm. you know. So uh, that was a lot of good hobby material. There. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, did you coin the phrase uh, computer privacy? No, I, I got involved in that subject, sort of a little side thing. I uh, gave a keynote speech at the Fall Joint Computer Car Conference, I guess it was about 1965. And I was getting concerned about using the social security number to tie records together. 
and uh, a copy of the talk was uh, uh, sent to uh, Congressman Gallagher, uh, who was uh, concerned because the FBI was looking at him and he was getting very interested in, uh -huh. in privacy. Uh -huh. And uh, so we had, we had uh, some hearings, and uh, I guess I'm the first computer nerd that testified to testified Congress, to on, Congress huh? on saying, hey, we, we may have a problem here. Well, what, what are the kind of problems that, uh, that you think are a problem now that worry you now about computer privacy? Oh, I think we're in a heck of a lot better shape because now we realize you know, what the issue is, mm -hmm. and we may have gone overboard in some of the craziness. Of, but as long as people understand that, that it is a problem, I feel pretty happy. You know, once it's identified, you know the magnitude, and we can go from here. Right. Well, now, you're, you're really the father of packet switching. What, what exactly I, is I packet switching? That. Well, uh, that was done uh, at the Rand Corporation in the very early 60s when uh, there was a problem of, of uh, building a command and control system that could survive attack, and uh, that it was a very dangerous time uh, mm -hmm. for the world, and that uh, they had two powerful countries, both with uh, nuclear weapons, a uh, high level of paranoia, mm -hmm. And, uh, but now, uh, packet switching itself is what is like, I mean, I've it's, heard, it's, it's like addressing a letter in an envelope. Yeah, and, and the, the reason for this uh, packet switching came about as a, as a solution to a problem. And that is, if we have a communication network and it got cut up, we found that there are paths through the network that one could draw, but mm -hmm. we had no way of getting signals from one point to the other. So we said, ah, let's chop the signals into little pieces, and we'll address each of the pieces like mm -hmm. a smart worm, and the worm could find sort its way like through. Flow or yeah, you have, worm. you have this little envelope, and you look at it, postman no. master looks at it, and says, oh, this goes in this direction. What happens uh, if two of them get there? Well, it's fine. You know, you can you put a little, you look at the cancellation dates, mm -hmm. and you look at the first, open the first letter, and then open up the second letter. So if one gets a little yeah, ahead, you the same okay. letter, then you throw the second one away, yeah. I guess. Mm -hmm. And you always make sure you keep a carbon copy of whatever you sent. <laughs> so then if you got trouble, you send it. Send it copy. again, huh? So that's so, about all it is. Now, now, exactly the problem you were working on, which caused you to devise, I mean, I guess this is well, a, a case where necessity was a It was necessity, yeah. Uh, that, uh, and, uh, that it was necessary to find a way of getting communication through sort of a fishnet that had holes in it. Mm -hmm. So you weren't sure in advance what links would be available to you. So and, and the message the, the itself the had to find The links might be way. gone because uh, they had been blown away by uh, nuclear well, weapons, right? So, so somebody is not... Uh, you know, has different viewpoints. I see. Yourself, so just in reason. case. Okay. But the idea was that we'd be more st have a more stable situation if we could trust the communications mm -hmm. survive, mm -hmm. because the, you, you couldn't do anything as as important as stopping an, the result of an accident. You know, right. Crazy things happen. Yes. So it's important to always maintain communications. So that was the problem, them. and uh, I understand that this work was not classified. No, we kept it unclassified. And, and why was that? Uh, well, we figured that both sides having secure, reliable communication systems uh, was a safer situation uh, than otherwise. So that's really uh, the reason that we're, we're here today, well, maybe, to, uh, we go, we, to uh, disarm. We, we are, that the, the whole purpose of you know, that military exercise was to try to cool things until people regain their so, common sense. So the idea is, that if I know that you have a, uh, a doomsday machine, really, yeah. and you and I have one, you know that I have one, then you're a little safer. We're locked in this then, uh, embrace. You know, if one doesn't have one, yeah. Yeah, right. Okay. Well, that sounds like about the most humane use of technology that I've uh, ever heard of. So uh, we'll be right back after this message. You, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, do solemnly swear. I, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, do solemnly swear. And I will faithfully execute the office of the presidency of the United States. The office of the presidency of the United States. And will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. The Constitution, the words we live by. Races are prepared for danger. The probability is there. You don't even start a race car without your seatbelt on. Without it, I wouldn't even be here. Man, I know what to expect on the track. It's 
Driving with amateurs on the highway that scares me. Drive like a pro. Buckle up.